So hi everyone, today we have a special guest on our channel. We have Bishal with us. So Bishal, would you like to introduce yourself once? Hi, this is uh, Bishal. Right now I'm working as an automation engineer in PhonePay. I'm having one year of experience. Earlier I was in Kolkata working for a startup named Codesyn as a Python and Django full stack developer. Right now I'm in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Right. So like you said, he has cracked PhonePay that too recently. So we'll be getting to know his journey of how he cracked PhonePay. So Vishal, would you like to start us off with your interview experience at PhonePay? Like how many rounds were there? What all happened? So one day I was in the office back at Kolkata and I got this call from HR and she was like, there is a vacancy in automation uh, engineering in PhonePay. And I was like, okay, fine. We can discuss about the role. She uh, asked me about okay, what are my like qualification and all, where am I working? What are the tech stacks and all? And like we go on, it was a normal like a uh, conversation only. After that, she said, okay, okay, fine. Then we can schedule a telephonic round with you that where we can discuss in details, like what are the roles and the job description and everything else. So it quite went normally. And for the role and the job itself, we had four rounds of interview. Two were managerial rounds and one were the HR round and one was the technical round that I had. Mm -hmm. All right. So can you explain to us a bit like what all happened in each of those rounds? Okay, so then in the telephonic round, they, uh, the primary focus was on the technology I was working and what was my job role in the company. Although we cannot give very details of that, but I explained that uh, I'm working with Indian Cargo, the customs department, and I'm building a software for them where we are parsing large JSON files, uh, like one lakh, two lakh lines of JSON. And we are just in real timing, we are showing it in a website or where they can uh, do further processing. So from there, it's like uh, my role was backend centric only. I was always in the database part and backend APIs and all. So it went for like 30 minutes and 45 minutes. Then there was a question that it was only one year. Why I'm trying to switch for another company? The most common question that we get it. I said, okay, uh, the project I was working on was quite stable right now. It's in the production. People are using it. And I don't think that I have much more to contribute to it. And since I'm on the onset of my career, I would like to explore more backend centric roles. And obviously phone pays India's largest UPI right now. So having exposure to such scalability and user, it's always advantageous in the career path that for engineers and as such. And after that, like the telephonic round went Part and word. So after that, we had the interview round. It was with my current manager only. It was a technical round. So he asked me uh, what I know about UPI payments, the gateways and all, everything. And most of them were actually based on system designs rather than normal DSA and something because the role they were offering was for customer experience and automation. So to understand the entire ecosystem and the entire journey from making payment to getting that reflected in your bank account and if something goes wrong how to retrieve that having contact so that is the entire part of the customer experience so like he gave me certain scenarios like suppose you have to make a website small website for a small shop where the shop is having an inventory and the user can uh, like shop or order anything how will you manage the inventory once the items goes out how will you give notification to the users, real-time notification? So all like uh, queuing, message, notification, calls, everything where it means whatever right now I'm doing in my role and job, those were the exact key points that I had in my interviews. So that was the second round after the telephonic round. After that, I had direct interview with the head of automations of PhonePay, who is like managing everything. So he asked me about what I know about automation. And I told him that since I am a backend guy completely, so I told him like, this is what I mean by automation, like anything you are doing, automating without any human intervention and not. Then he asked me that, how can I implement this while solving user queries? Because uh, in customer experience, rather than integrating APIs or something, you need to solve the real time queries of people. And we are talking about like, 600, 700 active users of phone pay. So I said uh, that kind of exposure I don't have, but this is my clear understanding that these are the things you're trying to solve. And I think that since I'm already accustomed with uh, making APIs and I know that 
how things work in the back end i think i might add some value to the team so that also went well and good after that we had the hr round hr round it was tricky questions uh, like she asked me that why do you want to join phone pay and all everything like you're leaving your company too soon you'll leave us too soon the, the all the questions and mm. scenarios Classic suppose you're having this this yeah the, that i think more than like technical round the hr rounds were much more tricky <laughs> because the question they ask you you cannot prepare for it <laughs> you're not ready for it mm. even they're asking so that's it and moreover uh, like when my interviews were going on i was having my elder sister's marriage so there was sound everywhere i thought ki i won't be really cracking the job because i was wearing like in a haldi sanyavani i was i was having haldi all over my face but that went well and good and on the same day they got uh, me an offer and i was like i'm happy then then the salary negotiation that whatever it is mm-hmm. that's a thing nice man nice so you're saying that it was almost completely on system design in your past experience and was there any dsa or there was completely no dsa at all yeah they were dsa obviously they will ask dsa but all on saying like in certain places more than dsa they know test your uh, practical knowledge mm-hmm. and since i was getting as an experienced guy with an one year of experience mm-hmm. that counts so all the question it was like implementing dsa in real life the scenarios that were not just plain lead code problems they asked they asked like they had given me a cer- certain problem statement and they so uh, told asked me that how will you solve using the tech stack that we are having right now so it's implementing those lead code problems in real life scenarios that was the kind of interview i faced at phone mm-hmm. so it was more like your use case of that data structure rather than solving a coding problem with it right mm-hmm. exactly so exactly. what would you say was the difficulty overall you felt of the interviews so the difficulty were obviously the scalability was the problem and there were certain topics which i never could have imagined that they'll ask because there are certain topics we always leave so the difficulty level obviously there was difficulty and since it was real life based scenario so pseudo answers or blabbering around the mm. point that won't help you yes. that is the main thing like if you think that we, you can say certain words and you can just go around the interviewer that would be a real life problem because they are they'll ask you to implement it via a valid tech stack mm. so you'll have to know that what is for what for example for queuing like rabbit mq for searches elastic searches and everything okay so where to store like any company many companies like most of them they use no sql versus sql mm. both the databases so understanding where to use no sql and where to use sql to store what kind of data in real time transactions and all that is really very important so it's like you'll have to understand everything in a good depth and you have to implement it practically mm. that is the level of difficulty i'll say mm. right 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 all right so the next thing that i want to know is how did you prepare for such interviews because again phone pay is a good product based company a lot of people want to crack it right so what was your preparation strategy for it so like right after getting into the college i got that pre placement in that uh, codes in that was the kolkata with startup so i had an uh, like this kind of every day i used to go home and i used to think like i'll make something because see we can agree on this point that dsa is very boring at times okay so yeah because many times until times. and unless <laughs> you can visual yeah until and unless you are visualizing that what problem you are solving it is just a bunch of line of code that you are writing okay so what i used to do is like let's say a problem from lead code that is the two sum very famous problem the first problem so what i did na i solved it like the problem statement is you are having an array or a list of numbers and you'll be having a target number and two of the numbers will add up to the target number and there will be a unique solution to it so one day i thought ki like let's implement this what can be the practical use case normally we use hash map or dictionaries for solving the two some problem so i thought ki what can be the practical scenario where i can use this like to some knowledge so i came up like it can be uh, basically we can build a very simple encryption device using this like for example uh, the numbers in the list let's say 2735 those are the private keys that you are assigning to four users and the number 9 that is the target number is the public key now if i am wanting to send a message okay 
So what I can do two is my private number nine minus two will be seven. So seven will be private number private key for another user. So he will be able to get my message. So I thought, okay, let's build a small full stack. I use Python and Flask because for me, it's like implementing anything. Python is the easiest substitute you are having, and Flask is also the easiest backend, like you are having. So I just implemented a simple HTML and CSS, no fancy website because I wanted to have the practical knowledge of that. So I just created no normal input tags where it is taking input of your private keys, means two seven for the array inputs, and the target number is nine. And then I'm like in the backend, I'm just implementing two sum. And I was like that for two's message, the receiver has got seven is there. So this is how I used to do it, visualizing everything and implementing that. Mm -hmm. that is that is pretty unique you know and this kind of project you know even if you make a large scale project like this this can easily like impress the recruiters and the interviews you know because other people take dsa at its face value just for problem solving just for doing lead code problems if you create something good out of it if you create something real world out of it then that really puts an impact in the interview right because until and unless you are able to visualize it, hmm. that why are you solving exactly. it? Why it is the need hmm. to inverse a binary tree or something like that? There's no point of having DSA now hmm. because we are engineers. Our task is to so pro like solve problems, not memorize solutions or something else. So I'll just suggest you, whatever you are doing, just make a small full stack project. You'll understand because with Python and Flask only, just set up a small project, use jQuery of the CDN links, use Bootstrap to save your time. And use obviously use ChatGPT for the front end. I don't like, I don't waste my, I, I won't say waste. I just don't indulge into front end things. I just go to ChatGPT and say, give me a normal dashboard kind of website where this will be the input. Just mm, give me the use your back end logic. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do the back end logic because that is where your lead code and DSA will come yeah. into play. Mm -hmm. And glad you said that because I feel a lot of people don't use ChatGPT that much in their technical life you know people are using chat gpt for all sort of you know weird or useless stuff but hardly people are using it for real technical knowledge gain Hannah. if you use it it can be a game changer for you definitely even even for my interview like preparation i use chat gpt like what i did now i pasted my entire resume to chat gpt and i told me you are my interviewer you'll be asking me one question at a time i'll be honestly typing the answer and you'll be rating my answers out of 10. You give me that. So what happened, like it was a mock interview sessions. Like, so before phone pay, I had TCS prime too. Okay. This year only like in 24. Yeah. For TCS prime. So I prepared in that way. It used to ask me like, for example, uh, that was Django based. My resume was there. So it asked me what is Django middleware or something like that. So I explained it. Okay, this is what I understand about Django middleware. Now you rate my answers and tell me where are the areas that I can be effective. If I don't know the answer to the question, you generate the answer for me. I'll just note, take a note of it because you know, it, it is an interactive and for me, like I use chat GPT for this things, everything, whatever I'm doing, I'm just asking and treating it as a friend in preparation. And I'm just leveraging AI tools on this. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That is a great way of preparation. You know, you can get mock interviews for free. It's basically like having a all knowledgeable mentor completely for free, right? So yeah, that is definitely a great exactly. way of preparation that you can use. So, you know, on a final note to all of the people who are watching this video, let's say who also want to crack a company like PhonePay, what advice would you like to give to them? So firstly, I'll tell that uh, right now all means when I was in college too, we used to run with big packages and all and all. So to be honest, like uh, just get started with a company. Okay. Use LinkedIn, use your local area search. There are number n numbers of startups. They are hiding because there you'll be getting idea. What is client requirement? How to build scalable systems? Okay. Not all of us belongs to tired one colleges or something else. Like, we all are human, we are having some kind of intellect and I'm saying, so cracking phone pay, the like the biggest support I got was my previous company because there I walked from the, like from being a fresher to an uh, like professional experience guy. There I know okay, what is client requirement, what is deadline, how to use collaborative GitHub. And so it's like, uh, if, if you're from a tired one and tired, like obviously it's somewhat easier for you. 
but again like whatever you learn in college and whatever you do in companies or while working it's a total different scenarios it's like class 10s physics and class 11s physics from 200 pages to 2000 pages book it's a real life so that is the thing just get started with something just don't sit idle don't go that i'll do this do that just start and whatever you are doing just make it like a oath kind of thing that you'll come home every day just devote one hour make a small project that you think for example yesterday i was having lunch with my uh, colleagues and he said ki ever wondered how this lift operates like i said we can make a system design on this lift operating system at first we thought it will be a very easy one we'll have a stack we'll just have the numbers and then after exploring the problem that there should be a direction vector to that whether the lift is going up or down the nearest neighbors like 2 and 3 or 4 so after that we realized that even a simple thing how much complicated the problem statement can be so practical approach is the key to everything mm-hmm. that is the thing i will say mm-hmm. that is amazing you know and i'm very glad that we're talking about this because uh, majority of in my podcast many people come and they talk too much about dsa even though let's uh, let's agree that dsa is important you know especially for cracking the top companies and even for your general growth mindset good dsa is important but i feel that the talk about dev is not as much as you have for dsa you know you should have that mindset of uh, doing dev like you said you know that lift thing you were trying to solve that to some problem you created into a project and you know recently i saw your uh, python project about the air guitar that you have yeah. <laughs> posted on linkedin right so that is some really great thing that you know people can take away from whoever is watching you can take away from vishal that you should have a knack for designing system you should have a knack for developing things because that's what you are right you're a software developer you know you will be building applications you will be developing applications and if you're not able to do that then your dsa skills are pretty much useless if you're not able to do yeah. those the right way right mm-hmm. all exactly. right exactly because like if you open linkedin like everyone is on lead code huh. they are solving 200 300 problems and all but until and unless you are enjoying the problem statement that yeah this is something that is you know that is the point and right? you feel like a real engineer but i was assigned my like they assigned my first project in phone pay that day i was like it felt ki like right now my contribution even a single line of code will impact like you know life of 600 700 million people so this is the day i dreamt of while learning and while doing so that is the kind of give yourself that opportunity because ultimately you are the best product you are building okay not anything not any other thing you are your best product so that is the thing work on yourself the skills right that will say that's some amazing advice right there okay so i guess that covers pretty much everything about bishal's journey to cracking phone pay so thanks a lot bishal for coming to my channel and sharing all these amazing tips with me and my subscribers i really hope this helps a lot of students so yeah thank you thank you ashish thank you for inviting me thank you <laughs>